really did not want me. Like, honestly, like, okay. Um, do you want me to just start from like when I got rejected? <laughs> I'm from Madison, Wisconsin, and I grew up right by UW campus, so I always knew that I wanted to go to like a bigger school. Um, and then after my senior year of high school, I started applying to colleges, and I knew I wasn't necessarily ready, but I kind of wanted to, I guess, jump on the bandwagon and start applying to schools. And I really wanted to go to University of Minnesota, and I remember getting the letter in the mail that I didn't get in, and I... I felt very lost. I felt like all of my friends were going to phenomenal universities. They were all moving out of our hometown and I didn't want to be kind of stuck where I was. So that's when I decided to just kind of take a break, restart, figure out who I am, what am I doing in this world? So I decided to take a gap semester and I lived abroad in the Dominican Republic working at a Montessori preschool. Spent about five months there. And then I went back to Madison, went to community college, for a semester and then decided to reapply to University of Minnesota and I actually got waitlisted. So after being rejected from here and then waitlisted, I was just like, you know what, this isn't for me. College might not be for me right now. I didn't really know what to do. And then I remember getting an email one day when I was sitting in my criminology class at my community college in Madison saying that I was off the waitlisted and I got in. And I just remember calling my parents and being like, you know, University of Minnesota is like an ex-boyfriend that keeps like coming back and then saying no and then coming back and then saying no. And then I, I finally got in and I had already accepted a spot at University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee and like posted that on my social media that I was going there. And then I did another post that's like, you know what, just kidding, like I'm going to University of Minnesota. Transferring in itself is a very difficult experience, um, but it makes it a lot easier when you have a certain subsection of such a big university like CLA to help navigate you and lead you through this transition. So for me, one of the biggest contenders in helping me out was I'm a part of the MLK program, which is a group of phenomenal people and advisors that have less students and you know can be a lot more individually focused. Coming to the University of Minnesota, which is already really big, but then being able to narrow it down to CLA, which is a little bit smaller, and then being able to narrow it down even more with my experience at the MLK, and then even furthermore to like my one-on-one -on -one experience with my advisor, Melanie Johnson, has, has been amazing. Melanie has guided with the most respectful and intuitive way my experience. So she's the one who told me about the major and why I might like it. And even my first meeting my freshman year, she was like, have you ever taught, like, thought about social work? And I was like, no, like that's not for me. And I met with her a couple months ago and we just had the most like reminiscent, like you said that I should do social work and I was so against it. And now I wanna go to grad school for social work. I always knew I wanted to work with people. I just didn't know like what that necessarily meant. Um, I was always interested in like law and crime and deviance, which explains why that was like my initial track. And then just through education and conversations with my advisor, I just kind of realized that wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do, but I still wanted to work with people and I wanted a job that wasn't the same every day. And I've always been interested in sociology. And ever after I like lived abroad, I knew that I really also enjoyed that as well and um, learning different languages. So. Throughout that whole conversation and a little bit of self-exploration, that's when like the global studies idea was brought up, which I had no idea existed prior to my like conversation with my advisor. And that was just seemed like the absolute perfect track. So it's really cool having somebody that can kind of like puts the time in to know what your likes and interests are and your passions are and can kind of see that in yourself before you can see it in yourself but then do it in like a respectful relationship way where like I came to it on my own terms, even though she was there to guide me throughout the way. So she's already like writing my grad school recommendations and I have such a phenomenal relationship with her and she's really just opened my eyes that such a big school and such like a big program kind of like CLA can offer you such individual one-on-one -on -one relationships that honestly can, like, can and hopefully will last a lifetime. The Community Engagement Scholar Program has honestly, in my opinion, been the most 
influential and important part of my experience at CLA. Fall of my freshman year, I took an English class and it was a community engagement class. So that means that you get paired up with some organization and you do 30 hours in that organization on top of your regular class hours. So for this specific class, I was paired up with St. Stephen's Homeless Shelter on Nicolai Avenue, and it's a male homeless shelter, um, a sober house kind of situation. So I would take the bus there and I would, my shift would be from 5 p.m. to 7 a.m. So I would do overnights with another volunteer. And it pretty much involved just like talking with the men, cleaning up, doing, making meals, stuff like that. Um, and then also doing wake up calls at 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., and 7 a.m. and making sure there was coffee and snacks and food and lunch for um, these men as they went off to work. So that was my first experience with community engagement. And then through that, I started to look for similar classes when I was like um, registering because I was like, I thought it was really cool to have the learning in the class, then actually taking some of like the skills and knowledge into certain organizations and then help assist in the organization's, you know, mission and align myself with their values and morals was always like a really phenomenal experience. So then through that was when I was first introduced to the Community Engagement Scholar Program, which is essentially 400 hours of community engagement work um, and some essays. And I'm also doing like a certain kind of capstone project with that as well. And that was an opportunity. I haven't heard anybody from any other schools or like even like subsections of University of Minnesota talk about, which has honestly shaped me to who I am today. It has changed my college experience more than the English language has words that I can explain it. It has helped me figure out who I am, like where my place in this world is, what kind of work I can do, and then just expose me to all the people that are working day in, day out, weekends, long hours that are doing such important work that a lot of people don't ever hear about or acknowledge. Being able to be a part of that and help assist in like these certain organizations, missions and values, and just be a part of like something bigger than me is something that I never would have gotten involved in if it wasn't for the University of Minnesota. Through the different type of community engagement work, I was um, with the St. Stephen's Homeless Shelter, and then I was with an organization that focused on politics and policy um, and Spanish as well, and then another organization that was focused on laws and legislation, and then a another organization that focused on domestic abuse. So it was a whole realm of different things, and throughout those, I kind of picked out what I felt um, I was best at and how I could best assist in this type of work. And it helps, again, just build the relationships that it almost mentor like relationships where I feel very comfortable reaching out to them with any concerns I have about the type of work that I want to get into. Because for me, specifically doing domestic abuse advocacy and sexual abuse advocacy, it can be very emotionally dense. And just knowing that there's other people who have been in this line of work for a long time and can give me tips and I can confide in them with my worries and fears and they can kind of help guide me through it gives me a sense of relief. And then hopefully one day I'll be able to do that for somebody else who's going into the field. So it's just helped me build very strong relationships and network and help me figure out individually like where I best fit into this world and the best work that I can do. Growing up, I always saw movies about college and kind of what it was and what it was supposed to be. So I always thought you would get in, you would go and live in a dorm, you would meet your best friends, maybe your significant other, your soulmate. They seemed to be like a very solid track of what college was. And even when I was graduating high school, I still had that idea in my mind. And then coming in and having a different experience where I didn't get in and then I transferred and I didn't live in a dorm and I had to find my own people to live with and kind of like my own friend group and not really knowing where I fit in and where I belonged was very different than what I initially thought it was going to be. But what I have grown and learned to appreciate is having the uniqueness. College is a community, but within that community, there's so many different experiences, languages, religions, cultures, all different things that make college what college is. So I had to take a step back and realize just because I didn't have like a quote unquote traditional straight track college experience doesn't mean that mine was any less than. And all the troubles and the difficulties I had getting here and then all 
the struggles I had with, you know, classes or trying to find my individual community in such a broader community was difficult, but it was all beyond worth it in the end. Like I'm very fortunate and grateful I had a different difficult winding path journey because it made me appreciate it so much more and it made me work a lot harder than I think I initially would have knowing that I want to prove to myself and to other people that I deserve to be here and I belong here because I always kind of felt like they didn't want me. You know, after being rejected and then waitlisted and then not getting housing, I was like, do I even belong here? Is this where I should be? And so I really wanted to prove to myself and the University of Minnesota that like I belong here and like I'm going to work my butt off to show you that I belong here and like you won't like regret accepting me. So I started working really, really hard and making sure I was just kind of doing everything that I could to prove to myself and get really good grades and, you know, volunteer and get internships and then have a job on the side as well. And I just really wanted to prove to everybody that like I belonged here. And I can proudly and finally say now that like I finally found my people and my community and like where I belong at this school. After all of that, like I made it, so yeah. <laughs> My name is Rachel Lair, and this is my CLA story. Mm -hmm.